Hey guys, this is Colin Moshman for CardRunners.com. Today we have live low stakes nine man Senego with a mixture of sevens and fifteens, standard format and knockout. And we have four games that we're going to be having as our feature table, so to speak, and a few more on the side in case we bust some of the main ones and have additional interesting spots come up. I'm going to pull those in and we'll take a look at the most interesting spots that do come up during this session. Top left, we have $15 uh, nine-man knockout. And East State Offsuit, there was an earlier position limp. And I'm going to ISO very wide when this player limps and I'm on the cutoff. So my ISO range is going to be a range of pretty much all suited aces. Ace 8 off would have been right around the cost by Ace 9 off. I'm definitely ISOing any suited Broadway hand. Queen Jack offsuit with the bottom pairs, say deuces through fives, I would tend to overlimp, raise sixes plus. So that would be my approximate raising range there. And I would raise all those hands to 75 or 80. The HUD we're going to have up throughout these sessions is going to be VPIP, PFR, 3-bet, C-bet, player name, number of big blinds in stack, followed by flop C-bet, and number of hands played, and BB fold to steal. Now the other hand that we played so far was a hand with pocket sixes, and so here we faced a limp from UTG, 3x raise in the cutoff and flatted as most of the time we're going to be involved in a multi-way raise pod with a low pocket pair and should have nice implied odds of about 25 to 1 to set mine. And we don't have to play too fancy to show a profit post flop in situations like that. So if we pretty much just play to hit our set, we'll do fine. And some of the time we'll also take a step. So for example, the flop comes deuce to seven and three way flop, both players check to us, we'll definitely stab there too. So we do have some nice opportunities to pick up the pot as well, even when we don't connect with our set. So East Queen Offsuit is going to be an open here. Now, if this player raised, so he has kind of tighter stats over a limited sample, and he would be early mid position, I would have flatted. And meanwhile, if say this player raised, I would tend to three bet. And of course, we have a clear ISO. And this guy, so this is an example of using some info over a very limited sample. So over four hands, we know very little about him. But the fact that he's been in three of the four hands does tell us that he's more likely than not to be a pretty loose player. And with our double over cards and the nut flush draw, I'm going to see bid here about two thirds a pot. And we will be willing to play for stacks. So if he check shoves, he started the hand off pretty short, we'll definitely go with it. And if he flats, then we'll definitely look to play for stacks if we hit. And if we also pair the turn, we'll bet. Generally, if we miss any checks with us, though, we would just check back and look to see all five cards for the price of our C bet. And also have a little bit of showdown value with ace high as well, even unimproved. So one of the things that we're definitely going to want to talk about is ways to study and improve your game. And a big way to do that in any turbo format is going to be to closely study ranges. And in particular, the Nash ranges are great. A lot of the time we're going to have a good reason to deviate, but our base point should be the Nash ranges and we modify them accordingly. So for example, we have a very good idea of say 10 blinds in the early game blind on blind, you know, that is with eight or nine players left, what we call it off with in the big blind then we're going to have a better um, sense of how to play exploitively as well. So for example, if we think the small blind isn't shoving as wide, we can then modify using the Nash range as a base point and go from there. So then we tighten accordingly, but that is going to be a good default range and an excellent way to study turbo SNG formats is beginning with those Nash ranges. So we just played a pot on one of the outer tables, so we'll take a look at that. So we did face a raise from UTG plus two and flatted the ace queen suited. Now part of the reason why I like to flat in spots like this is I really don't want to three bet and face a four bet. We would have to fold facing a four bet. We do also have position. So three betting, we, we could make it say 200. That's certainly not a crazy play. It's very reasonable. But for the reasons I mentioned, I do we like to flat there.